So after listing the most disappointing horror films of 2022, let's cleanse our palettes with my favorite films released since October's Best in Horror Countdown. Unlike most critics, I like to release my best of list during the most appropriate month of October, so followers of this channel, and why aren't you following it already, know what I think was the best horror for most of this year. You can look at the following as a preview of next October's countdown, as some of these will most likely show up on that list. Here are the best horror films released between October 1st, 2022 and December 31st, 2022. Welcome back to M.L. Miller Frights. I'm M.L. Miller. Before we begin, please do me a favor and punch that like button down below. Share this video with all of your social media addicted pals, click subscribe to this channel, and ring that bell for notifications. Let's check out the best in horror released since October 1st, 2022, listed in chronological order by their release date. Two Witches was released on October 1st, 2022, and can be rented on Amazon Prime from Arrow Films. It's directed by Pierre Tsigaritis and written by Pierre Tsigaritis. Kristen Klieb, and Maxime Rancon. Two Witches came right out of the gates and shocked the hell out of me. Does it use the coming out of the darkness, coming at ya, jump scare with a scary witchy woman's face too many times? Yes. Yes, it does. But that coming out of the darkness, coming at ya, jump scare with a scary witchy woman face style scare worked on me about 99% of the time due to the strong acting, wonderful establishment of mood, fantastic cinematography, and overall sense of ooky dread. This isn't the deepest film, nor is it the most original, but damn it if it didn't creep me out the entire way through, and I loved it. This is one of those sleeper horror films you stumble upon and wonder why you haven't heard about it. Well, now you have, so you're welcome. Werewolf by Night was released on October 4th, 2022. It's streaming on Disney Plus from Marvel Studios. It's directed by Michael Giacchino and written by Heather Quinn and Peter Cameron and based on characters created by Jerry Conway. While I do think that this hour-long episode needed a lot more werewolf, I love the cinematography and unpredictable plot of this adaptation of one of my favorite 70s comics, Werewolf by Night. It looks like this was a big hit, so I hope that means more black and white trips into the darker side of the MCU, which has been lagging in entertaining me lately. I'd love to see a full-length feature or a series focusing on Jack Russell and his furry alter ego, of course, with his buddy Man-Thing along for the ride as well. Terrifier 2 was released on October 6, 2022, and is streaming on Screenbox. It was directed and written by Damien Leone. Whether the excessive gore turns you off or flips your stomach, you can't deny the force of nature Damien Leone has unleashed with his Terrifier series. The original film is proof that gory horror and creepy clowns are still going to be a hit for horror fans, especially when it's in touch with the primal levels of tactile fear a quality that permeates both Terrifier movies. But while the original film was lacking in a real story other than a clown chasing a pair of girls for the entire film, Terrifier 2 actually had a narrative, characters you cared about, and even hints at some kind of gnarly backstory for the sadistic Art the Clown. This movie is not for the squeamish, but it definitely delivers in gut-wrenching carnage and scenes that will make the hairs on the back of your neck stand at attention. Terrifier 2 is better than the original in every way and is a must-see for all fans of horror and gore. Hellraiser was released on October 6, 2022. It's streaming on Hulu. It's directed by David Bruckner and written by Ben Collins, Luke Petrowski, and David S. Goyer. I know this one had its problems. It misses the point by delivering characters with very few flaws, contrasting with Barker's original where no one was without sin. The pure good versus bad never works in a Hellraiser story. You need more shades of gray and levels of bad to make it work. That helps in giving the best of Hellraisers that kind of moral discomfort that David Bruckner's film lacked. I also think Hellraiser had a messy ending with too many players standing around and waiting for others to catch up. Still, I really love the new designs of the Cenobites, 
what I could see of them, that is. Jamie Clayton delivered a very strong performance as Pinhead, the best since Bradley stepped down, and I like the transformation scene towards the end as a key player becomes a Cenobite. This is the best Hellraiser we've got since Hellbound, so for that alone, this fan of the series was happy to see it return with this level of quality and care put into it. Deathstream was released on October 13th, 2022, and is streaming on Shudder. It's directed and written by Joseph Winter and Vanessa Winter. If you're sick of the found footage format, I feel you've just seen too many uninspired films in that subgenre. They do tend to be repetitious as hell. But Joseph and Vanessa Winter's Deathstream is the antithesis of all that. It centers on a very charismatic and funny protagonist, filmmaker Joseph Winter himself, who bumbles his way through a house in the middle of nowhere for his YouTube page, and the house is rumored to be haunted. Seeing Winter stumble his way through the night and scream like a little girl at the slightest movements of shadow is a complete delight. The practical effects and narrative twists and turns kept me on the tip of my toes all the way through. This is just a wonderful midnight movie filled with laughs, chills, and thrills. It's the next best thing to walking through a haunted house attraction at an amusement park. Piggy, aka Serdita, was released on October 14th, 2022, and is available on demand, digital download, and for rental on Amazon Prime from Magnolia Pictures. It's directed and written by Carlotta Pareda. Part mystery, part mean girls, part twisted romance, but never forgetting that it's a horror movie, Piggy is a unique thriller from Spain with a bold lead performance from plus-sized actress Laura Galan, who plays Sarah, the butcher's daughter and village outcast. After having her clothes stolen while swimming by bullies, Sarah crosses path with a serial killer who has just abducted those same girls who have been bullying her incessantly since she was a little girl. Turns out the killer has a soft spot for the outcast, and a bizarre romance forms between the two. It all plays out in a goring and thrilling finale where Sarah has to choose between the one guy who doesn't treat her badly, who happens to be a ruthless killer, or saving the girls who have bullied her all her life. The answer is not as easy as it seems. My full review of Piggy is coming, but I found this to be a genuinely unpredictable, emotionally complex film and Laura Galan kicks ass as the unconventional lead. VHS 99 was released on October 20th, 2022, and is streaming on Shudder. It's directed and written by Maggie Levin, Johannes Roberts, Flying Lotus, Tyler McIntyre, Zoe Cooper, Chris Lee Hill, Joseph Winter, and Vanessa Winter. I gotta admit, not all the installments in this year's VHS anthology, which focused on the last year of the 20th century, were great. I hated the distasteful and clumsy Ozzy's Dungeon segment, I rolled my eyes at the repetitious and predictable The Gawkers, and I felt the plot to The Shredding was just too threadbare and lacked oomph. But I loved the interconnecting segments focusing on a home movie made with green army toys, and really enjoyed the claustrophobic terror of Suicide Bid. But the true treasure to behold in VHS 99 was Joseph and Vanessa Winters to Hell and Back. Yes, these are the same filmmakers who did Deathstream that I mentioned a couple seconds ago, proving that the talent this filmmaking pair exhibited there was no fluke. I'm eager to see what the Winters have in store for us in the future, as they sure delivered a potent, gory, exciting, and hilarious one-two punch with Deathstream and this best segment in VHS 99 to Hell and Back. The segment also has a star-making performance by Melanie Stone as the sprightly demon Mabel, who gives an iconic performance akin to Hannah Fireman's siren character from the very first VHS. Feed Me was released on October 27th, 2022. It's available on demand in digital download and for rental on Amazon Prime from XYZ Films. It's directed and written by Adam Leader and Richard Oakes. One of the best Descent into Depravity released recently was Feed Me, based on a true story where one suicidal man decides to fulfill the desires of a cannibal by offering him up his body to eat one piece at a time. While there is tons of gore and weirdness to be had with Feed Me, what makes this film so special is that it somehow manages to have a kind and touching story about friendship mixed in this bloody soup of a story. Christopher Mulvin delivers a strong performance as the broken-hearted meal-to-be, 
but it's Neil Ward's iconic portrayal of the truly bizarre Lionel Flack that steals the show. While looking like a dead ringer for Ted Lasso's Jason Sudeikis, Adam Ward creates a complex character who is both ruthless and pitiful at the same time. Ward is the main reason you should check out this deranged little film. Satan's Slaves Communion was released on November 4th, 2022, and is streaming on Shudder. It's directed and written by Joko Anwar. Picking up a short time after the events of Satan's Slaves, also filmed by Joko Anwar, and a remake of the Indonesian horror classic from 1982, entitled Satan's Slave, Communion moves the horror from the countryside to a high-rise apartment building in the city. Still plagued by the curse of a mother who sold her soul for fame, the remaining family must deal with a new portal to hell opening up in their apartment complex. Anwar has become one of my favorite filmmakers, delivering character-centric sequences of shock and terror. Anwar plays with perspective, lighting, and all sorts of camera trickery to deliver and never repeat the same type of scare twice. While one might dismiss this film as a series of spooky scenes linked together, it makes for a wonderfully full and potent ghost story that thrills from beginning to end. The Menu was released on November 18th, 2022. It will be available on demand in about a week or two from Searchlight Pictures. It's directed by Mark Mylod and written by Seth Rice and Will Tracy. Ultra Foodie Tyler, played by Nicholas Holt, invites Margot played by Anya Taylor-Joy, who is not a foodie, on a date to an exclusive restaurant on a remote island prepared by renowned chef Slowick, played by Rafe Fiennes. The meal is supposed to be to die for, literally. But Margot is not on the guest list, and this multi-course meal has been specifically fashioned for the guests, which include Best in Show's Janet McTeer, Who's the Boss's Judith Light, and Super Mario Brothers' John Leguizamo. What unfolds is a sophisticated and wicked commentary on foodie culture, polite society, class warfare, and restaurant politics. Things get gory and messy, blood is spilled, and the least you know going in, the better. I haven't given this one a full review yet, but it's one of the best thriller horrors I've seen in theaters recently. Something in the Dirt was released on November 22nd, 2022, and is available on demand digital download, and for rental on Amazon Prime. It's directed by Aaron Moorhead and Justin Benson, and written by Justin Benson. The filmmaking team of Moorhead and Benson deliver a thinking man's horror movie about a pair of listless dreamers who meet in an apartment building and become friends as they discover a dimensional rift in their apartment that causes all kinds of paranormal activity. Being set in Hollywood, the two obviously try to make a documentary about it, but their bumblings get in the way of understanding anything that is going on. What unfolds is a fascinating character study of two vastly different, yet wonderfully developed characters trying to find a place in the world. This movie gets deep into conspiracy, there's tons of talking, and if you're not into YouTube rabbit hole theories, you might not find this as engrossing as I did. But something in the dirt sucked me in and wouldn't let go. While the film ultimately doesn't arrive at solutions or answers, it provides a wonderful look at the trials of making a movie, man's eternal fascination with the unknown, and manages to squeeze in a true snapshot of what it's like to live and love in Los Angeles. Reminiscent of Aronofsky's Pie, Benson and Moorhead's latest is a wonderfully cerebral nightmare. A Wounded Fawn was released on December 1st, 2022, and it's streaming on Shudder. It's directed by Travis Stevens and written by Nathan Faudry and Travis Stevens. If you're looking for a film that's a bit off the beaten path, A Wounded Fawn definitely fits the bill. On the surface, this is a typical slasher film, but Travis Stevens, who directed Jacob's Wife and Girl on the Third Floor, makes it all a surreal nightmare as a massive head wound causes the killer to experience hallucinations of his victims coming back to haunt him. Or are they really haunting him? Or is any of this really happening? The answers are irrelevant, because the wonderfully simple yet highly metaphorical effects and imagery prove to be haunting and impactful. Scare Me's Josh Rubin is fantastic as the psychotic yet bumbling slasher who just can't seem to keep the ghosts of his past victims buried. There's an Evil Dead 2 dreamlike sense of comedy and horror at play here, 
This is Stephen's most accomplished film to date, filled with off-kilter scenes of bizarre madness made real. It's not going to be for those of you who like their horror straightforward, but if you don't mind an abstract plunge into sheer psychological nightmare, you'll want to check this one out. Finally, we have Adult Swim's Yule Log, aka The Fireplace. It was released on December 12, 2022, and can be seen streaming on HBO Max. It's directed and written by Casper Kelly. Adult Swim entered the world of live-action horror filmmaking, kicking and screaming with this surprise gift for horror fans when it released Adult Swim's Yule Log. This complex story incorporates just about every horror subgenre you can imagine and never gets too caught up in its own lore enough to lose you. It's got trippy imagery, gory sequences, dream logic, solid scares, and characters worth reviling and falling in love with. What starts out as a static image of a roaring fire becomes one of the best cabin in the woods roller coaster rides you'll experience this year. Watch the wholly unpredictable and completely clever Adult Swim's Yule Log while you can, preferably during the cold holiday season, and you're bound to have a crackling good time. Well, that's the best films I've seen since my countdown in October. I've put links to the full reviews below and to my horror countdown that ran all through October. Happy New Year, everyone. I hope this year proves to be better than the last. Take care. Stuck inside your reality, your